This program is proudly brought to you by the South Melbourne Market. Open Wednesdays, Fridays and weekends. Tonight on Community Kitchen, Claire Hooper joins us at the South Melbourne Market whipping up some halloumi wraps in the LG Kitchen. We have a chat about Perth, her career and motherhood, plus hear a song from Melbourne trio Hoy. Stick around. Hello, welcome to Community Kitchen. I'm Laura Davis. Today we are at the South Melbourne Market in the LG Kitchen. Today we're cooking with Claire Hooper. Welcome. Thank Hello. you for coming. Yeah. What are we making? We're making a green bean and halloumi wrap. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty exciting. It's kind of the only thing I cook. And it's sort of, it doesn't sound like cooking when it's a wrap. I hot, think it counts. Two hot plates, it counts. And it uses more condiments than I'm used to. I'm not yeah. really traditionally much of a condiment we'll person. but labels there. Two, that's right. Uh, where did you find this recipe? Uh, um, I used to, uh, when I was working on Good News Week at the Fox Studios in Sydney, there were markets on our filming day, and we used to all eat these green bean and halloumi wrap <laughs> things. The um, green bean halloumi wraps for um, lunch. Everybody else had them with chicken, but I'm a bit funny about chicken. Okay. Yeah, no mystery I'm chicken. Veg, I'm, no, I'm a bit veggie inclined, so okay. I eat chicken, but only if um, I've like, only if it's free range. Okay, fair and enough. Only very rarely. And how free Let's range? Let's not get into that. How does, free range? Yeah, does it need its own apartment complex or? Oh no, God no! You can't have chickens living in apartments. You need them to have a backyard. I so think, properly free range. I've been thinking of like the free range eggs. They have. They have the thing that says how free range the eggs are. Yep. Something like uh, 10,000 chickens yep. per hectare. But I don't know what 10,000 chickens looks like, and I don't even know what a hectare looks like. So it's, you go, oh, good, but I don't know what either of those measurements combined mean. I know, but you can still compare in that you can go, <laughs> well, 10,000 chickens per hectare or 1,000 chickens per hectare, and then yeah. you, you can at least, you can compare even though how you don't really know hectare? what they're... Mm. Oh, I can probably fit about 10,000 chickens on one well, pretty comfortably. Um, oh, thanks, you, have you been cooking lots lately? Because you, you've just had another person. Yeah. You've made so one. So I have, yeah, I've had a daughter. And, uh, yeah, I'm traditionally not a kitchen person, right? Does she eat the green bean wraps yet? Oh, my God, she loves green beans. To any new mothers out there, green beans. I want to hold one too. You want to hold one too? I want to look down the camera with a bean. I haven't done that before. Yeah. All right, so... Um, a steamed green bean is the best baby food. You keep a few in a little Tupperware container if you're going to be one of those cafe mums. And I am, because I will not have my lifestyle curtailed by a newborn <laughs> child. You take green beans, um, as soon as they've got the dexterity to hold it, it's really easy to hold. She's been able to hold them from about four months. Oh, advanced. They're really fun. Yeah. Oh, advanced no, bean holding. Yeah, let's say that. <laughs> um, she's shown promise in one area, and it is... <laughs> the area of bean holding okay so they can hold it and they can gnaw it and the little beans come out and they're just sweet enough but they're not going to choke on them and if yeah. they drop them on the ground they're easy to pick up and they don't stain and they don't squish you know banana strawberry yeah, all of no. those other things gross green beans at this point we like to have already turned the oven on and mm -hmm. i haven't wrong one nope no how finely would you oh, that is the onion one. chopped up um how do we make it really? What's I don't know what's oh, you really want this hot one? and what's no no I've got that one on. How I do you reckon, make it there? Yeah, I reckon that's I reckon that's full. I reckon that's good. What's interesting is I still don't know how to use my oven at home. We oh. had that house for about four years, maybe yeah. even longer, and I don't know what all the symbols mean on the front. There is a picture of a fan, and I know that means fan it's force. Probably. But my mother-in-law is staying at the moment. She's like, "How do you turn the grill on?" And I went. <laughs> I don't know. So that's what we're dealing it's with. It's a here. mystery that's, forever. That's where my lovely daughter's growing up in a house with a mother who doesn't know how to cook, and I'm, I'm really trying to, I'm trying to yeah. get that up. I know I got a sultana sandwich for lunch at school Did for you? like a lot, a lot of days. Nothing bad. Really? Happens. Yeah. Cream cheese and sultana sandwich. That was my favourite. Still alive. I was a child. Did you like it? 
I don't know. I can't well, remember. Okay, here's how you know if you liked it. Since you've been making your own sandwiches, <laughs> no, have you ever made no, one? No, I've never had one again. I wish my mum was here to help me open this salami packet. Oh, how about a knife? I'm going to have a little... Thank I'm you. I'm going to emotionally open it with my onion eyes. All right. <laughs> Thanks for cutting the onion. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. I'll just use the knife for this packet as well. Let's cut some strips of this salami. Right. Shall I? Or do, yeah. you, do you want to? Oh, you let's want to get, get involved? Bit. Okay. And what surprised you the most about your, your new child? Oh, that it wasn't easy. Um, you know, because I've just seen so many idiots have babies. <laughs> and I was like, I'm pretty great at stuff. Yeah. Not cooking, but um, oh, a whole lot of other things. Idiots can do it. You can do it. And I have found it, I've, yeah, I found it really challenging. Um, there's a number of really challenging. I mean, like, you just don't understand them or what they need. And it's very frustrating because every time they cry, it's like, it's basically all you hear as a new mother is because you don't know what the words are. All you hear is, you're doing a bad job. <laughs> like, that's what you hear. And then they cry all day. And More all... beans. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what she was saying. She's got a hungry cry, her uh, tired cry, her bean cry. <laughs> and they all sound the same. <laughs> And really, and so I'm just showing beans at her all the time. <laughs> it was quite funny because I was like, you know, I'll just be at home, hanging out with the baby. Baby's on the rug. I'm just doing things. I'll learn to cook, etc. And it's really, um, there's so much more demanding than you could ever have imagined. And yet you can't account for your time at the end of the day. Wade will get home. Why am I so... We should do this one, maybe. Yeah, let's, all right, let's turn that one on. Yeah. This one. Sweet work, Laura Davis. I'm pretty on it. Mm. Yeah, let's chuck all of those in. Um, so way to get home at the end of the day, and I'd look like I'd oh, just less of a human being than he left <laughs> in the morning. And I wouldn't have been able to get anything done. And I couldn't tell him what I'd be. Like, the monotony is relentless. Anyway, and then at about six months, because she's just over six months now, you know, like yeah. she's, she's past that mark, suddenly she starts laughing and smiling and can kind of entertain herself a little bit and hold her own green beans. And you're like, oh, the world is wonderful again. Yeah. But it's, just, it's kind of six months of going, what happened? You know what it's, you know what it's like? It's like when you, you know when you were 12 and you'd like hold a seance with your friends at a sleepover? No. And then, and then you know, you'd see movies. Where, did you not no, ever I never seances? held a seance. All right. Okay, you know when you watch a movie and in it some people do a seance yeah. and then they write, like they um they call up a demon from from hell and then we're like oh god we were just trying to have fun and look what we've done that's what it was like that's <laughs> what <laughs> you look at the cop and you're like oh what have we done and now how do we get rid of it Laura I was just I was just jamming there I but I realised that it, I've said on camera that my Baby is a demon and we want to know how to get yeah, rid of her. Yeah, It's too late now. Okay. Did you want to barrel it? No, I really, <laughs> no, I, really love, I really love her. It just... I'm just saying yeah. it felt like someone had played up a practical, six, a practical joke months. on us. No, yeah. she's got a bean. No, she's okay. all good. Yeah. Oh, where the fuck did you go to school? I went to school in the hills. Ah, oh, so... Because I went to school in the hills in Perth as well. I went what? to Les Moody Senior High School. Oh, you were the Carolina on the hills, and I yeah. was over. Well, I, I lived in Maida Vale, so I was in that pocket between oh, yeah. the two sets of hills. <laughs> you, were, you were the inner hill. Well, we did our grocery shopping on your side. Yeah. Um, and I went to school on the other side in the, um, you know, the Darlington Hills. Bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just remember a very long bus ride to school through just nothing. Just. Yeah. Just drive to school Isn't it for great? 40 minutes through nothing. And yet when you live in Melbourne, you don't get to drive through nothing anymore. No. You have to go a long way to find any nothing. I always think, because I go back and there'll just be nothing, and I go, they've put Fitzroy and Collingwood and Carlton in the space that there's nothing. Yeah. Around my house. In yeah. Back in WA. Do, you, do your folks still live there? I don't yes. have a tool for this, so no. Penny, don't I do reckon this. we can... Um... Don't use the knife in a good circular pan. <laughs> Oh, mate, there's all that sorts of favorite. tools. Let's just use this one, guys. Yeah, that looks like it's a halloumi flipper. Mm -hmm. Also, it wasn't as cooked as I thought, so. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I just want to, I actually quite like getting the halloumi a bit brown. So we're pretty happy with our halloumi browning up nicely. So mm -hmm. we're going to take a break and we're going to come back afterwards. Hoy are going to be playing later in the episode and we're going to have some tasty green bean wraps. Kitchen. We're at the South Melbourne Markets with Claire Hooper. Just got some tasty hot chocolates on yeah. this. It's, it's the second of spring that we're filming this on and it's not as sunny as it should have been. I, yeah. I heard it was going to be miserable again. I thought the good weather had come and it's it went not, away again. It's so, do you have you gotten used to it being from Perth? Because I've been mm. here just over a year. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. Nah, man. I've been east for like seven years now and, um, Ali, lucky for me, I have always liked miserable weather. Ah, what do you like about it? It's miserable. Um, I know. Well, I've always... It's, you know what it is. My mum's from England and my dad's from Australia and I always romanticise this amazing place that mum was from. So, And I've been to the UK lots of times and it's a lot like this. So I quite like being in Melbourne pretending yeah. pretending I'm in London. Yeah. What do you, what do you miss about Perth? I miss my family they're all in Perth mm. and I mean as I was saying I'm I'm not a cook yeah and since I've moved to Melbourne I'm, I mean I've eaten a lot of cereal for dinner for seven <laughs> years thankfully I met a man who can cook but he's not always at home to mm. help me with plugging in the times into the microwave so that I can heat up leftovers you know like I'm really yeah. a beginner in the kitchen and I miss the fact that I could just go around to mum's heaps and eat her food yeah you were talking about that lots of nowhere. So my folks yeah. live in the hills and they live across the road from National Park. The zigzag? Yeah, yeah. The zigzag used to be, um, the, the hill was too steep <laughs> for them to take a train straight up to Kalamunda. So they built this yeah. backwards forwards for them to bring goods up. And now it's just a, a beautiful I was national park. there a few weeks ago when I was back in Perth. Yeah. We went to the zigzag. You went to the zigzag. With my mum. It's to look. funny saying zigzag. In, you said it, I've said it all my yeah. life, and now that we're in the middle of Melbourne, it's like zigzag. The that zigzag. doesn't sound like a real it's thing. A, it's a real thing. Okay. We went to look for fossils. Like, there's good sedimentary well, rock there. Yes, you did. <laughs> my mum's a science teacher, and so we get, like, this little pick and go out and break rocks. Okay. <laughs> it's like a little little gulag for, oh at the zigzag. Oh, my God. You're even more of an outdoors nerd than like, because my parents are into horticulture. Yeah. So we go wildflower spotting. Yeah. But you're looking at sedimentary rock. Like you've just <laughs> gone next level. I thought I yeah. was the. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Dag. All right. My yeah. mum had an uh, assignment once when she was at uni where she had to collect different kinds of fungus. So we just spent weeks walking around like, is that a different kind or oh, we've already got that fungus and where's the new oh, wow. fungus I want to be the best at fungus spotting <laughs> oh that's really that's really cute all right I miss night so I beach miss the zigzag. I miss night beach like when it's warm enough to go to the beach at night yeah. and swim even though the sharks are terrifying when you don't even know if they're there you know what if there is if you are going to get bitten by a shark best that you don't see it coming i reckon <laughs> yeah like i'm not interested in day beach no i don't want the scrutiny of the bright sunlight i on don't my, want the uv on my scary little buddy chinese takeaway food on a night beach the best thing no, that's the best. Offer. yeah that is true how old were you when you moved to sydney uh out of Perth. oh no i was 30 mm. I waited for my 30th birthday. I was yeah. like, On your let's birthday? not go while I'm young and fun. <laughs> I'd seen too many Perth friends who wanted to make it in the arts, yeah. move to Melbourne, come home with their tail between their legs, and I'm very easily put off from adventurous ideas. So even though I loved the idea of being a performer or living in Melbourne, I was just like, no, I couldn't do it. If they can't do it, I couldn't do it. And it's interesting that I went to the Edinburgh Fringe before <laughs> I even moved to yeah. Melbourne. So we went there, lost a lot of money on a show, but I got just enough interest yeah. from the show that a Melbourne agent said, let us know when you come to Melbourne. Yeah. And I went, 
God, I'm coming to Melbourne. And, yeah. yeah. So it really, I, I kind of, I was such a coward that I needed the assurance of management oh, of that I would be taken care of before of I came. Like, I, I came when I knew I had enough work, but there was a fun moment where I'd gotten on the plane. I'd, I'd never lived anywhere else. I was never even moved out of home. I was bawling my you eyes out. You came straight from your parents' home. Yeah. I said goodbye to mum and dad at the airport. Cried. So, how old are you? I'm 26. Yep, great. I got okay. on the plane, bawling, about to move across the country, turned on the in-flight entertainment, and Luke and Wyatt were hosting Nickelodeon Kids Fun, and I just went, okay. Because I came yeah, up of course they moved. with them, yeah. and they moved a few years before me. I was like, it's fine. just my turn, it's just my turn. Yeah. And I would turn them off, because kids TV still and I would cry and turn them back on and she would <laughs> still laugh. and it just repeated for three hours of me crying and then cheering and then myself turning up. on kids TV yeah. wow have you have you come to this one to, I've come to South, South Melbourne, Melbourne markets. markets yes like I'm really really vegetarian inclined but my husband likes to have some meat in the house and so he has been a bit of a darling and he researches, you know, like the good butchers where you can get the stuff that's proper free range. Yeah. So there's a really good butcher here at the South Melbourne market, so yeah. Ah. <laughs> so he's come and done some meat stock ups. Some meat in the house, like hanging like mistletoe in the kitchen just as decoration. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> some chops in a vase. No. That's okay. disgusting. Um, <laughs> no, more more good good meat in the freezer. But yes. Um, Maybe we should have more meat floral arrangements. <laughs> I came here last festival, I was very poor, and came to South Melbourne Markets, bought a lot of dry beans and veggies for very cheap, made a soup, and I think I lived off that soup for the full four weeks of festival. It was just... And, and a lot of people survived off it too. I was like, no, come around. I made... Come, share in my bounty. <laughs> Uh, it was like a I kitchen. have a buff to have a vegetable soup. Yeah. Everybody can have some. Um, Laura Davis, I know this is my episode, but okay. you've only told tragic stories of crying on planes <laughs> and eating soup for months. So do you have any happy stories? Uh, no, no happy ones. Um, I, I went to the park the other day. I have a really good time. I have a good time in my life. I... I eat Chinese food on because, the beach at night. Because what you don't know is she just told me a story of her employer letting her have a three-minute break in the fridge eating a leftover samosa. Like, no, we can't. She I'll get only pies. have okay. We can't. Get, we can't say pies. where that is. But I'm encouraging you to leave. <laughs> just go back to the bathtub of vegetable soup. You don't, don't need even, to make money if that's how you're making money. They don't even know who I am. I'm just. I'm community <laughs> television's Laura Davis. Standing in a fridge eating a leftover samosa, go. Don't you know I'm on Channel 31? Oh, no, no. It's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, look. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nice break for me, even though I'm terrified about chopping beans <coughs> on camera because it is a new skill for me. Yeah. This is a nice break because I'm trying to um, trying to write a new show, right. and it's it's down to two and a half weeks until I open, and that's no way to write. I mean, stand-up comedy is always better if you've experimented with oh, the yeah. material on stage a whole lot. Yeah. And the idea of writing it in a little room yeah, and then doesn't... walking, blinking into the light, having never said it in front of people before, that's nowhere to do a good comedy show. But it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a tricky one because I'm writing it about school camps, which sounds lovely and nostalgic. Yeah. And there is an element of nostalgia, but also, really, there's the more I've sat down with the stories, the darker they get. Yeah. And there's a really horrible one about one of my teachers getting arrested for doing something awful. Ugh. And so it's that thing of registering a show title and going, school camp, that'll what? be fun. And then going, well, actually, all the stories are horrible. We very likely went on the same school camps. You probably did the cabins and yanship with the archery range. No, but there was always archery. I don't know why that was why? something. I did a lot of archery. Why archery? <laughs> you really? Because, I mean, let's think about it. Those poor teachers. You have yeah. to discipline you for an hour a day usually yeah. and suddenly they're in charge of discipline 24 hours a day. Have you ever stopped to think about what an awful thing it is for the teachers? Yeah. And then someone would have, would have said, and so we'll take them all away, you look after them for 24 hours <laughs> and we'll do archery. Wouldn't you think the teachers would be like, okay, all right, that's one step too far. I'm going to finish my hot chocolate. We're going to pop back into the kitchen, we're going to hear a song from Hoy, we're going to eat our delicious green bean wraps and we'll see you after break on Community Kitchen. Community 
Kitchen. Today we're at the South Melbourne Markets with Claire Hooper. We're about to hear a song from Point, but first we have to eat our delicious halloumi wraps. Yeah. I'm going to make sure we both get the same amount of halloumi. Okay. And I don't want this onion though, I'm picking it out. Oh, mate, I'm not mad on onion either. I put it in because you meant to. All right, <laughs> get rid of that. Ugh. Slivered like almonds, a... rocket, halloumi, Pretty green good. beans. Yep. And then, of course, we've got to put... Um, We've got to put some condiments on. Like I said, not usually a big condiment person, but mayo and sweet Important. chili, and this is great. I feel I feel silly now because oh, you didn't want the onion. I didn't want the onion. I know. I cried have... cutting up the onion, and we I didn't know. even need it. We didn't even need it, but you know, people need to know <laughs> that onion's good on it if they're onion people. Yeah, oh, we need to yeah. give them the, their, all the information. They make their own decisions. Um, and I don't know what you do with the wrap, but I always <coughs> I always lift the tail up. Oh yeah. You know, make it. Uh, Have I put too much in yours, or are you just not a good roller? Hey, I don't know. Right. Sometimes. Okay. There's no scientific controls here. Get ready. <laughs> right, you go first, else we're both eating on camera, and it's never, it's never great. Mmm. Wow. I am amazing. Um, it's it's hard to mess up this one. Mmm. Oh, it's a really good mix, I mm. think. It's a really nice combination. And the slivered almonds, just with a bit of crunch. <clears throat> mm -hmm. mm. Well, thank you very much for coming and making these tasty green, which I've ruined. I've ruined them. I really should have rolled yours up for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm, I, this was not for me. Okay. Um, All right. If you want to stick around and find anything else about Claire, we'll put your website and Twitter mm -hmm. up. It'll be about here in front of the stuff that I've ruined. Yeah, we'll use my Twitter handle to cover up your <laughs> unsightly mess. My unsightly mess. Uh, so thank you very much for watching Community Kitchen. Thank you to South Melbourne Markets and the LG Kitchen for having us. We're going to take you out with the song from Hoy.
This program was proudly brought to you by the South Melbourne Market, open Wednesdays, Fridays and weekends.